and welcome to our real thoughts on Bridge to Terabithia, a film that everyone said don't do and now it's about to break a million. So, nye, 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 nye. <laughs> I always love it when that happens. That's my smug dick part of me. Wow. Um, <laughs> <That is> awful. <laughs> I, I, I can't help it. Uh, you know, little girls dying, it just equals great comedy. Um, Leslie died for years since. <laughs> Monster. Actually, the, at the last con I went to, the one thing, I guess, this one group of people is just really quoting the scene where it's like the light shines and she closes the purse. It's like, I got him! I got God! I got God! <laughs> part of it. It's just it led to so many good jokes. Um, but okay, so we should get to our real thoughts on it. Um, I can't say I hate this movie, honestly. Um, it's it's bad enough to hate. It's one of those where it, you can clearly see what they're trying to do, and I like movies that succeed in doing this, uh, where it's not like you know, it's, it's kind of like doing something like The Sandlot, but then throwing in like something that's really tragic, you know, and does happen and is, a, is out of the blue. And, and that happens in life. I mean, particularly death. It just kind of happens out of nowhere. And how well, a person was, deals with it. It was based on an... I mean, not base based on actual event, but it was... The author, I believe, had lost a friend and it was sudden. Mm -hmm. So... Well, and, and you, you, know. you read the book and you said yeah. the book was... It, okay, big shock, but even darker than the movie. The, bo respects. the book... <laughs> just remember, we had to read that book in the fourth grade and that was like that was the literary equivalent of Bambi's mom because you know you're just reading and then it's just like your friend Leslie is dead and like there was just this I remember as a child my jaw just dropped I'm like what no that can't happen that can't wait, wait, wait no there's something wrong there's somebody printed this wrong that that can't happen like it just was really dark and Shocking. Like, it really, and I, I just remember as a kid, I was kind of in a funk all day. Like, I just, and I, I remember I was young enough that I didn't quite understand the concept because I was a good swimmer, um, even as a kid. Uh, I couldn't understand the concept of drowning in such a small amount of water. Um, I mean, didn't they say, like, she knocked herself out I or something? It, it broke I, and she hit, like... I have, okay, I haven't read this book literally since... Well, like, I was in the third or fourth grade or something. Uh, fourth grade. I thought she hit her head, but that she had drowned in the, the creek that was the crossing there. Like it was face down. I yeah, like, like face that. down, and she drowned. I, maybe I got that wrong. I mean, she slipped and definitely hit her head or something. It was from the rope. Yeah. It was definitely... And I just remember not comprehending that, but I'm like, but how can you drown? And it was just like... I remember afterwards, just I was in a funk, like, wow, well, if that could happen, I, I could die any second. <laughs> like, it, it was one of those... I have water every day. It can fucking kill you. It was the first moment where I realized, even as a child, my own sense of mortality. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, I could die. Like, like I could get struck by lightning. I could... Kids can die. What the? <laughs> so it was, it was actually kind of traumatic for me, like, as a kid, like, reading that book. I was like, fuck! So... <laughs> that, no, I, I just see you, like, reading it in silence, just look at that part. Fuck! Like, just loud in the middle of the classroom or whatever. Well, I, we were 80s kids, so we definitely swore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that was everybody's collective thought bubble when they got... Because we were reading it in class out loud. And there was almost this collective shock. Like, everybody... In You're like, reading it out loud? Fuck? Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, everybody had to <laughs> That's take... That's mean! <laughs> everybody ha every student had to take turns reading. Um, fortunately, I didn't have that part, because maybe I would have been like, your friend Leslie's dead. Fuck! <laughs> like, but I remember there was this, like, collective sort of... <gasps> and, you know, and I... It, it, I'm not complaining. I think kids need darkness. You know, this goes back to the Don Blue thing. But it it was like everybody in class, I remember that day, was kind of like, whoa. And then the, <laughs> Walking the, in a daze. Yeah, <laughs> and the few people who, like, read the book, like, a little bit ahead, the really smart kids, are like, yeah, I knew that for a couple days and wasn't quite right. And then, like, and then it was really great for the people that missed it because they weren't in class that day. And then day. they showed up the next day. So I then left his funeral, like... <laughs> Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's it exactly. So, yeah, it, the the book, and this is the problem with the movie. There's too many different groups pulling in too many separate directions. It, I believe that the screenwriter was the son of the author. I think she gave her blessing. I um, think she did. Uh, yeah, don't don't quote us on. Yeah, I'm sure don't she don't quote me on that. But um, sh so. You can see him trying, but he's also writing 
a Disney movie. And, and, and to be I, fair, say that when, I say that with the Disney movie guy voice, a Disney movie. Like, well, and let's be honest, I think this is back like pre Wreck It Ralph, pre Frozen, pre Gravity Fall, pre cool Disney now. Like, Disney actually has really taken it, some huge steps now to being actually pretty awesome again. Uh, and maybe this is part of the sloppy transition, I don't know, because for Disney it is kind of a risk, you know, but. Uh, and if you. If you yeah. read the book, there is a, not only just a darkness to it and heavy adult themes, um, but there's a grittiness. And it was the grittiness to me that rang the most false in the movie. Everything about that school, about the kids, about the bully, about Leslie, about the boy just rang false. Like every single thing because it was a Disney school where there are bullies but nothing really bad happens. It's a Disney school where kids get into trouble but not real trouble like smoking or anything like it. And I just remember I, at least if I'm remembering the book right there just felt like the kids there was a realistic quality to them that there was kind of this 70s sort of like early 80s like just kind of grittiness to it like reading the book like when they would do things like you know you would hear things like about smoking and stuff in there and like the, the kids felt real um you, you, you know and maybe i'm misremembering that because that was so many years ago but i thought i remembered because i remember a lot of books s seemed to have that quality when i was reading it i was like wow like, <laughs> like some of the things that kids are doing like you know and i didn't get that in the the Disney film at all. It just felt I very got, safe. Like they all I, no, dropped no, no, out they, of an episode of That's So Raven or some Disney channel They show. were definitely... The elements were still there because they still addressed the, the the bully that was, I think, beaten by her father, I guess. Um, you know, or, or the father was It was still there, but it was you toned know, down. The, it was like brought back No, yeah, yeah, no, the and then the um, And then there's dialogue that I'm like, wow, I'm kind of shocked this made it in a Disney film, but it's obviously, like you said, kind of Disney-fy, like, you know, the little girl saying, you know, God damn you to hell, God damn you to hell. Now, I can see that, like, kind of in a gritty, realistic kids film, because that is how kids would talk, you know, sort of not quite comprehending, or, or maybe comprehending too well what their parents are teaching, whatever, about religion. And, you know, can we, we hear these talks, like, you know, when you're a little kid, somebody like me, you know, no, I got the right way, and here's how it is, and it can be about anything. It can be about sports, it can be about religion, it can be about TV shows, it can be about serious stuff or non-serious stuff, because kids don't quite know the difference yet. Uh, so well, that's the other thing. I think the religious element was definitely toned down. I thought there was way more in the book, if I remember it. Mm. Well, like, yeah, because she was like, and, like, it's only touched. It's only even hinted upon. Like, but I, th I thought I swore I remember there was way more of like this religious element of like the atheism and stuff, and is she yeah. going to hell and stuff. Yeah, like, I like yeah, again, it it's in there, but you're right. It's very very it's toned in there, down. but it's very it's it's just it's. It's light. It's like a low-calorie soft drink mm -hmm. or something. It's the Diet Coke of here's a religious discussion in a kid's book. Like, And I think if it's done right, I mean, I think people... Again, this is why I don't know if I can, like, blame the writer or the director necessarily for this because, like why you said, it's a Disney. Disney film. I think, um, it, I think it was the studio. Yeah, and it's one of those things where it's like that stuff... <sighs> The stuff they're talking about and the emotions that kids feel when talking about this stuff is really heavy, uncomfortable stuff. Uh, and if you're really going to talk about it and you're really going to address it, you have to kind of really dive into it instead of sort of touching about it than having your popularly dressed Leslie character who was... You know, I think in the, the book little she's hipster girl that drops in yeah, the sky. Yeah, which in the book she's described as a tomboy, which is like, that's... Okay, so she's not wearing pretty dresses, but it's like, that's definitely not a tomboy, you know? That's Those are pretty fashionable, colorful, well, she's, you know, yeah. picked out outfits, you know? I mean, you can see, like, you know, like I said, I think I compared to, like, a Barbie doll, you know, in the show. It's like, you can see, like, hipster Barbie. Like, yeah, it's that's still a, <laughs> color-oriented. Um, and, you know, a lot of people she were... She wasn't, I, uh, at least from, again, what I remember from the book, I didn't think she was quite odd enough. Mm. I still was kind of like, she could almost be the popular, just sort of quirky girl in school. Mm -hmm. Like, almost, like I could I could see that, and I'm like, I'm not sure that's what they should have gone for. But again, she looks like a construction out of some Disney playbook. 
Like, it, I can't, I'm not sure if that's really on the writer, director, even costume designer. I just feel like Disney's just like, yeah, make her look like this. Like, well, and the actress, make her look like a Disney Channel star. It, the actress, a lot of people sort of, you know, were saying comments and stuff like that. What, you're making fun of that she's too pretty now? What, pretty people can, you know, act this way or whatever? <laughs> uh, I think for the character they were trying to go for, it, it sounds like... You know, she was supposed to be kind of like, like she can be pretty, but still kind of average and a little quirky and weird and stuff like that. And this girl, again, not she's a kid. I mean, you can't fault her too much. Well, but like, no, okay. but this girl spoke way too clearly, was way too precise. I mean, everything seemed like you're out, you're out of a movie. You're not a real kid. You are a movie construct. And if that's not what a, this film needed. It needed a kid that really felt real. If the boy a, felt very real to me. That, that is the one character I'm like, no, he, he felt very genuine. Peter was great. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, he, he really was. I, I thought he, yeah. he did all his stuff fine. And she... I can't tell if it's on her, like, her acting isn't great or if it's a director problem. Um, I, I always tend to just go with the director because I'm just like, well, then you could have talked to casting or somebody, like, you know, but... Yeah, he was really good. She just... She felt really false, and I'm not saying that's her problem as an actress. I'm saying something about the way that character was put together in that scenario just came off as is just so whimsical, and it it felt it well, felt the whole fake. Movie the character in the book felt way. yeah, the character in the book felt real, whereas her character in the movie felt like some sort of construct, like, oh, she's supposed to be the one, the, the Pippi Longstocking type, to turn their world upside down, and oh, look, they're painting on the walls. That was painful. Oh, that God. Painting. Remember that the, painting the, the scene? Oh, yeah. the parents were... Yeah. Oh, it's like, yeah. The, the space the, hippies the who dropped from the sky. Yeah. And, and like, yeah. Yeah, they had and, the perfect fucking saying for everything. And the thing is, when you read the book, aspects of that are there but they're developed and it feels like okay this is real and there is just sort of a culture clash here you know in the middle of this backwoods sort of town but like in the movie it's so glossed over like they felt like no child would have the patience to sit through that that it just they sort of breeze through it and so you get these caricature parents who are singing into the paintbrush and it's like every bad cliche scene from a chick flick you see like play the pop song sing painting ha oh, laughing getting on each other <laughs> see now what i always got you know, like, at least what they were probably trying to do was that he's seeing her parents and becoming jealous because his parents weren't like that. But again, it's because they're trying so hard to make them too perfect. They, well, they, and there's they, an there's no envy, that, there's doubting reality. There's an <laughs> aspect of that in the book, because in the book, he had real issues, I think, with his father. And I remember just kind of in the film just being very confused because at the end it comes down to Robert Patrick and then I always forget that actor's name, Peta, uh, <laughs> you know, there. And it's a great scene at the end, but I'm like, this didn't feel earned. Like, this felt like there was some scenes missing that played up the problems they had even more. And the problems got really dumbed down kind of in the movie, the missing key and the, you know, but... In the book, there was way more. The father was a more complex character. The issues they had seemed more complex, and the movie just sort of just, well, let's dumb it down into, you know, something simple just to make the father kind of the bad guy until the end when all of a sudden, you know, it's like, oh, now we're fine. I, I think what, you know, what, what I think of with this film is that it, it, the story sounds to me, you know, like what, what it was trying to convey and sounds like very much did, uh, and some of this is left up to the reader's imagination, but it created this very real environment uh and this very yes. real world the same way that to kill a mockingbird did it just felt yes. so real it felt and, and like emotions. a time capsule from that period in time and, and i don't but, remember but the also, exact date it was supposed to be it, like i always got this impression when i was reading it it was years back from when i was reading it as a kid so maybe the 70s or something but, like but it sounds like it also and, captured the emotions of childhood it just captured childhood yes. really well and childhood you know as, as bright and colorful and wonderful as it can be it's a dark it can, and scary place yes i mean it, it can be a very dark disturbing and very fearful place and gritty we forget that i watched something as simple as a christmas story and when ralphie swears son of a bitch yeah your father's a horse's ass and this and that i'm like why don't kids swear in kids' movies? It seems so unrealistic to me. Well, and another thing like, about... Like, we're so afraid of, like, oh, a fragile little minds. Like, I'm not saying kids uh, need to be dropping F-bombs left and right in movies, but... 
No, the, the really awkward is when they do try to have the kids swear and it doesn't work. And it's like, yeah. oh, wow, you're trying to go for the gritty, but they're clearly not, like, these are not kids who swear. But uh, but what I was saying is that because then if you're going to try and bring this reality, which is really what the book was writing about, it was writing about this reality, uh, the reality of emotion and reality of uh, childhood and the place you live and stuff like that, uh, you have to just go full force and you can't sort of tap upon it you you need to go all the way and i think you need like kind of the best of the best you need the best actors you need the best writers and you need to fight as hard as you can against a studio that's trying to do something else which again i'm not saying like you know are ah, you director come on just fight back it's like i'm not saying that i mean it's, it's the, really the biggest issue is this needed to not be a disney movie this needed to be picked up by miramax or and i hate to say it like some oscar bait studio looking to you know grabs it but it needed that ability to get out of that disney box and make it darker, make it grittier, make it slower, keep it smart, keep it intelligent. And you, you couldn't do that because, you know, you had to feed the mouse! <laughs> you, you know what it is, too, because we always say Disney can get dark with, like, their villains and some of their, uh, you know, darker themes and stuff. But it's like, here's the thing. I think there's a difference between dark and uncomfortable. And <laughs> I think this film needed to go to uncomfortable in order for it to work. Um, and I don't think and Disney... It, Disney is never willing to go too uncomfortable. No. They will go to dark. I don't think they'll quite go too uncomfortable. With few exceptions. Hunchback at times got a little uncomfortable in a good way. Uh, but even then, just the slightest touch. I mean, but yeah, there's very few times Disney will do that. And I don't see it happening anytime in the future. So yeah. it's one of those things where it might just be like, you know, just the predicament. You're stuck with Disney and you have to make the compromises, you know, fair well, enough. Well, that's why but if this movie yeah. was going to work, I think that's, that's why I don't hate, hate the movie because I can see decent people, actors, directors, writers trying to make the best out of something that they've been kind of just shoved into, like make a Disney movie and you can see them trying and you know that's the case because the only parts of the movie that are almost flawless in their execution is after she dies. Yeah. No, that's, you, you, that part of it is the only part that felt like the book. And I'm like, because this is dark, disturbing, uh, you know, kind of messed up. Angry. Uh, angry. Yeah, I'm like, it's almost like the direct. It's almost like I could see the director just like doing it for that portion of the movie. He's like, oh, whatever, I just want to get to this part. This is where the meat of the story is. <laughs> like, it, No, it really feels like, you know, yeah, like this director had a very clear vision of what that you know, last third should look like and feel like, and, th and was putting all the focus on that, and then everything else is like, well, it doesn't matter, it just has to be happy, and, you know, whatever. Disney can handle happy, and I can let them make the changes, whatever, and so I just have to get this right, but it's it, it really is a two-way street. It's like both have to be very well done, well, they have to balance and out. And this may have been the trade-off, because the story I read somewhere is that Disney initially wanted them to change the ending so she lives. Yeah, that would have... Fans would and, love that. And, and the, the, the writer, the screenwriter... Oh, didn't was, they say put her in a coma? Or yeah, something? that was just like, put her in a coma, let there be some hope, let her wake up then maybe at the end, or, you know, who knows, maybe possibly for a sequel. <laughs> While you were sleeping. Uh, you know, and the, the to his credit, the writer was just like, I don't think you assholes get this at all. Like, it's, it's like, no, we're not going to... It's, it's like, that's not what the story's about. That is a complete betrayal of, like... That's like doing Star Trek 2, and then at the very end, Spock's like, oh, whoop, sorry, just a mistake. No, I'm fine, <laughs> I'm good. Like, you know, at least they went through the whole other movie to bring him back. Like, it... You can't do that. So they were worried that it was like, well, it's too dark, because kids are not going to, like, you know, I'm like ridiculous but so i'm wondering if that was the trade-off that like they're like okay we'll keep our dark ending and everything but then we gotta like spruce up the first half of the movie and make it more fun and goofy and like <laughs> um, um and remove all of the grittiness from it which really i think is what bugs me the most just because I, I still wouldn't say all there's still like i said they you know it feels like it feels like they mentioned the gritty but they don't experience it they mention it, they say it, but they don't go through it. They don't feel it. You know, it's in passing. Oh, her parents, you know, are getting a divorce or he got arrested or something like that. Oh, you know, God does exist or she didn't believe or whatever. Oh, this person is going through some sort of terrible abuse. Or something. You know, they say it, but they don't feel it. They don't experience it. 
If you're really trying to do something realistically and talk about themes like death and really resonate with a child, I don't understand why you wouldn't make that school experience realistic. That's what bothers me. Oh, I agree. I The only thing um, I can imagine is that they were trying so hard to, as adults, create this very romanticized version of childhood that is then destroyed by the reality that, you know, kids can die well, and stuff can happen, but I still don't think that works, because if you're going to feel something for that person, you have to always be in that reality. Well, and this is the other and, problem. And the fantasy world is escaping that reality, so the reality needs to be as realistic as possible. Yeah, and exactly. And you already have is, the fantasy yeah. world. No, and I think, I think this is the other problem. I think one of the bigger problems the book had is updating it. I think they should have gone the Sandlot route, the Christmas story route, and set it whenever the frickin' book was written. Like, I think by updating it so it looks like 2005, 4, whenever it was made, just in the country somewhere, was a huge mistake. I think they may have been able to get away with more and at least maybe you could have had a kid be convinced that maybe because this is an older time period, maybe kids actually acted like this. You know, a little more sanitized. We know different because we grew up. <laughs> but but by making it in 2005 and 4 and everything, it, it just rang so false. I'm like, what kids talk like this? What This is how Disney Channel kids talk. This is how kids in a real <laughs> high school in 2005 talk. Yeah, maybe that was it. She seems like something, the Leslie girl seemed like something out of the Disney Channel. She didn't seem like That's something That's what I said from life. the beginning, yeah. yeah. She's used the Disney Channel. Um, uh, and creation. that, I think, is a huge mistake. I think maybe had you set it back in time, you could argue that it's a, time, it's a period piece where you just remove some of the gritty elements so you could, a kid could get a little bit of distance there. You know, and maybe buy it a little more. I don't know, but I, I remember sitting there halfway through the film and thinking that I'm just like, I just can't see any high school like sounding like this. Like, it just it, it, this is just too disnified. And for a book that was you know dark and really affecting, uh, I think not just for me, but for a lot of people who had to read it. I still know people that when you mention Bridget Terabit, they're like, Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> I fucking want to slit my wrist after that. But, you know. It really needed to resonate and feel real, and it just didn't feel real, except for like the funeral and when she dies and that small section of the movie and some of the stuff like I think there were additions they had the bully being the troll. I don't remember if that was the case in the book. I'm wondering if that was. Now, that's an a nice. I, 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 would I like thought that was. A, that, I thought honestly. that was a great touch. Um, but more of the fantasy, like the elements of reality go in the fantasy, which is like, okay, the bully's making the beep 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 sound, and that's what the monsters make. Uh, no fucking shit. Oh, that's incorporating the reality. No, that's taking something you heard, throwing it in there, making the tiniest bit of a connection, very obvious connection, but I mean, like, the troll being the bully, I mean, that, that's The like resolution, a, that, the that's, ending of the film, I thought... The, the, the black monster chasing black him, which is yeah. really the father. That, that's I thought that addition. was actually pretty... Yeah, I thought that was pretty brilliant. And they strike me as things that, you know, the son of the author would have come up with as a way to expand upon, you know. So, I mean, there were good ideas there. It's just, once again, I, I just think... The mouse must be obeyed! <laughs> if, I, if, if you want a much better version of this idea, if people are, well, how would you do it right? I wouldn't say necessarily this is doing it right, but it's definitely closer and more creative, like, where the wild things are. Like, where the wild all, things all are. All the emotions in there are 100% yeah. genuine. If you want, like, a concept of what I'm talking about, like, as, as much as I hate to say it, Monster Squad. The way those kids acted was how we really acted in the early 80s. Yeah, like, no, that's just kind of true. <laughs> like, and I, I think you can do... Sandlot, if, I think, is... What, I think you can do that. Well. I don't think you can with a Disney film. I think they've got too much of an image to protect, which is why I think Disney should not... They should have let it go. Or sent it... Does Miramax owned by Disney? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, or sent it to... Yeah, Miramax. sent yeah. it to Miramax and say... You know, technically we own it, we'll make money of it, but this is not, this is not Disney! It's Miramax, <laughs> you know. Yeah, um, it, it's, it's, I think you're right. I think they should have handed it off to, you know, one of the but other. But we shows. like, I think we liked the movie overall better than we let on, but we all were also Yeah, I, 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 I really, I really no don't hate, hate it. it. This I, I was probably one of the better films we've watched for the NC. Like, it would be in my top 20 of, okay, this was actually Like, this watchable. is tolerable, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like... 
You know, the, um, it, when I, I do remember while I was watching the film, because it was getting actually pretty good reviews, and, uh, but they were also marketing it as, like, the next Narnia, which that's a whole other set. The marketing was oh, completely oh, false. Oh, no. Completely wrong. That's what made me laugh. really great, because you saw the trailers, and yeah, you're like, I, if this is, like, had, what the yeah. book is, this is not. Oh, no, because you you're hadn't, something really you different. hadn't read the book. Yeah, he hadn't read the book, and so when this came out years ago, I'm like watching the television, I just burst out laughing, and, and you're like, what's so funny? I'm like, I can't believe they're marketing this as some cute fantasy, and you were just like, what, it's not? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm like, this is like marketing Schindler's List as a romantic comedy. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I, and that was the one part of it that did make me laugh, because it was like the thought of all these little children going in thinking they're going to get this cute little fantasy, and then hitting that point, you know, your friend Leslie's dead. <gasps> <laughs> like crying in the theater. I was just like, oh man, I wish I could have seen that. Well, I remember because he was getting good reviews and like, you know, and, and people say, oh, oh, the critics are, oh yeah, it's, it's really good and stuff. And I'm watching this movie the first 10 minutes. I, 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 I was watching it with my wife. I said, do you like this? And you know, she's very open to like, you know, the more happy go lucky. And so she goes, no, this is really stupid. And we're watching it and I say, okay, Somebody has to die because there's no way this would get critical praise if somebody doesn't die. At first, I was thinking the sister, and then as soon as I saw the girl swing across, across the rope, and you see this Lomo with her smile, I'm like, she's gone. Yeah, she is dead, and that's kind of the biggest crime well, because and, 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 you're not supposed to see that coming. Yeah, and, and that's the other problem is in the book you don't see it. I, I don't think any of us reading it just saw that coming. I mean, it literally was just out of nowhere. That's why it was so scary. Like that's why I was like, I could die at any second. <laughs> like the world's out to kill me. Um, so yeah, the fact that they would like hint that and, and like play up, you know, her angelic qualities as she's swinging across, <laughs> just big mistake. But yeah, I t <laughs> to market that film as some happy-go-lucky fantasy, I was just like, that is the most brilliantly evil marketing I've ever seen in my life. Well, and that's one of the reasons I really wanted to do the review, too, because whenever I told people I didn't like the movie, they're always like, oh, because of the marketing, right? You just didn't like it because of the marketing. I'm like, no, that didn't help, but it's like there's a lot of reasons I don't like this film, and everyone would always insists, oh, it's because you thought you were going to get a fantasy. So I'm like, okay, all right, I'll fucking show you. And I did the review <laughs> with that incredibly mean-spirited title card. <laughs> that might be, like, the meanest I've ever done. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty great. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's, uh... And you, no. you hit it. I think the reason it got the critical reception it did is because it ended on a high note. And by that, I mean her death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that part of the film was done well enough that the critics just... Sort of overlooked Got the amnesia about the... Yeah, if you end a movie well enough, you can sometimes forget about the first half. Because I think if the whole thing was like the first half of that movie, I, I don't think it would have gotten the critical praise. Yeah. Either. I think, too, that for the same reason we don't like it as much... I think critics did. I think some critics looked at it and was like, well, this is a Disney movie, so if I lower the bar, yeah. this actually isn't that bad. I think that may have given it a boost. Like, whereas we're just like, well, this is actually a dark and gritty story, but it's a Disney movie. So. <laughs> so <I'll lower> it <laughs> down. Um, but yeah, I, I don't hate it. I don't think it's very good, but I don't hate it. And I do, I appreciate what they were trying to do, and I like how it succeeds in the last third. And like I said, I think The Boy is very good. Uh, you know, and actually, I am, I really like it when young child actors, like, ones are legitimately like, hey, you got real talent, go on to something really great. I am glad he's in the Hunger Games and he's doing great in those. I didn't even realize until I was watching, the, uh, that review again, uh, Bridge to Terabithia, I was showing it to somebody, and then I'm just like, wait, 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 wait. I was like, wait, is that PETA? I totally <laughs> forgot that's PETA. Like, I think I make, like, a cake joke or something, like, cake decorating kick joke or something like that. Um, but, yeah, yeah I, so, so I, 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 I like it when really good child actors, like, get rewarded for legitimately good acting. Um, and not going crazy is always nice, too. Um, yeah. So, make it yeah. dark, make it gritty, hand it make to it someone. Real. Yeah, make it real, hand it to someone other than the mouse. Um, you know, and it, it may have been good, but I think it was just too many, not even that there were too many cooks in the kitchen, it was just each cook had a different idea of what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I think the writer, the director, and the studio each had three different concepts. I think the writer and the director alone could have made it work, but I think when you add the studio executives in it going, well, according to the chart, she should just be in a coma, mm -hmm. you know, can we cut back on this and the swearing and the, the you know... It, I'd be what curious. Are you gonna do? I'd be curious if Disney would do this well now. Like I said, because no. they, they have done so much, uh, so what? much kind of different stuff. What? Oh, okay. Uh, what? What? Under the Disney label, 
Walt Disney Pictures, not Miramax's. I mean, what have they done that would be even close to this? Well, I'm talking more about, like, the themes of what they've been doing. Like, Wreck-It Ralph. I mean, the, the moral of Wreck-It Ralph is deal. <laughs> yeah, but really they could get still to. get away with it because they're operating in a video game candy land. There's already mm -hmm. candy everywhere. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm wondering if, like... That's the problem with Bridge to Terabithia. There's the fantasy element, but otherwise it's it's not pretty. Like, I, I, I would almost... If, if they did it now, if I had to guess, if they did it now, I would say that the fantasy world would be played up more, but then that would balance out so they could get more dark and gritty in the realistic world. So they would up the playful stuff, but it'd be only to offset the really harsh stuff, if I had to guess. Um... Which, like I said, I mean, it's not like it's years and years ago. I mean, it's, what, not even, like, you know, a, a decade ago. Well, actually, maybe it is a decade ago, when I think about it. It's, we're, what, 2015 now? It was 2005? Yeah, yeah, something like that. So, so maybe it is a decade. We're uh, freaking old, we're dude. Old. Oh, God, I'm sorry about that um, But, uh, yeah, so that'd be my, but that's just speculation. Who knows? Um, so, yeah, that's our real thoughts on it, and uh, we will get back to you with more of our real thoughts. And, hey, if you any particular movies you want to see us uh, talk about and see our real views on, just go ahead and leave in the comments below. We'll try our not best to junior. get to <laughs> Yeah, not much to talk about with that one. Boring, that's it. End of the review. <laughs> so we will see you next time. Take care.